70,000 years ago, our ancestors were insignificant animals. The most important thing to know about prehistoric humans is that they were unimportant. For decades, scientists believed that the oldest human DNA ever recovered went back about 100,000 years. That was already considered astonishing, evidence that our genetic code could survive deep time. But recent breakthroughs have shattered that ceiling. Researchers have now sequenced DNA from fossils nearly 400,000 years old and more relevant to our own species. The nose is very large and it's pulled forwards. It has a very large internal volume. So partly it seems that it's there as acting like a radiator. It's warming up and humidifying the air that's coming in. They have reconstructed the oldest high-quality modern human genomes ever discovered in Europe, dating back more than 45,000 years. This achievement is not just a triumph of technology. It is a revelation about our origins. These genomes tell a story long buried beneath ice, stone, and sediment, shedding light on the first modern humans to reach Europe, the challenges they faced, and why their genetic legacy disappeared. Let's unravel this groundbreaking discovery. The Ancient Origins The research centers on two sites in Central Europe, Ranis in modern-day Germany, and Zlaty Kuhn, literally Golden Horse, a cave site in the Czech Republic. Both yielded skeletal remains dating back more than 40,000 years, placing them in the critical window when Homo sapiens first entered Europe. Until very recently, knowledge of these early pioneers was based on fragmentary fossils and scattered stone tools. Their identities, cultures, and movements were clouded in speculation but DNA preserved inside bones and teeth, against all odds for tens of thousands of years, has now given scientists a direct voice from that remote past. At Rannis, archaeologists had been excavating for decades. They uncovered distinctive stone blades belonging to what specialists call the Lincombian Renizian Gersmanovitsian, LRJ culture. For years, scholars debated were these tools made by the last Neanderthals or by the first modern humans? The incomplete skeletal fragments found nearby offered no clarity. Now, genetic sequencing has provided the definitive answer. The Ranis individuals were Homo sapiens, members of our species, living in Central Europe more than 45,000 years ago. Zlati Kuhn's story is equally remarkable. In the early 1950s, workers uncovered a nearly complete female skull deep inside the cave system. For decades, it remained a scientific curiosity, with dating results that pointed to great antiquity but gave little certainty. Recent genome sequencing has revealed that this woman, often simply called the Zlati Kuhn woman, is among the very oldest modern humans ever identified in Europe. Her remains date to between 42,000 and 49,000 years ago placing her at the dawn of our species' expansion into Eurasia. The survival of DNA this intact is extraordinary. In temperate climates, genetic material usually degrades beyond recovery, after only a few millennia. The fact that readable, high-quality genomes were retrieved from these sites is nothing short of miraculous. And what those genomes reveal is rewriting the story of Europe's earliest humans. Life in a continent in transition. To understand the importance of these discoveries, we must picture Europe 45,000 years ago. This was an age of transition. Neanderthals still occupied much of the continent, though their numbers were dwindling. Meanwhile, the first waves of modern humans, our direct ancestors, were beginning to arrive from the Near East. The meeting of these two human species was one of the pivotal encounters in our history. Until the DNA from Ranis and Zlati Kuhn was sequenced, however, we could only theorize about who those first Homo sapiens were. Archaeology showed that they were skilled toolmakers, fashioning blades, points, and ornaments. But where exactly had they come from? How closely were they related to later Europeans? And what role did they play in the disappearance of the Neanderthals? Genetics is now providing answers. The results confirm that the Ranis and Zlati Kuhn individuals were fully modern humans, descended from the same migration out of Africa that populated the globe. But their lineages diverged early. Unlike later populations, 
these people represent a lost branch of humanity, a wave of pioneers that ultimately left no surviving descendants. A lost chapter in our story. This revelation is one reason researchers call these genomes among the most important ever sequenced. They are not just old DNA samples. They are a direct record of the first modern humans to set foot in Europe. History, however, is rarely a straight line. Human expansion was not a single successful journey, but a series of attempts. Some flourished, others ended in extinction. The Ranis and Zlati Kun people belonged to one of those early waves, explorers who pushed into new territory only for their genetic line to fade from the record. The Family Ties of Ice Age Europe What truly sets these genomes apart is not only their age, but the human connections they reveal. For the first time, scientists have reconstructed an extended family network that lived together in Ice Age Europe. At Rannis, genetic material from 13 individuals was examined. Sequencing identified at least six distinct people, three males and three females. Among them was a clear mother-daughter pair, a woman and her young child, preserved together in history. This is one of the earliest confirmed parent-child relationships ever identified through genetics in prehistoric Europe. Other fragments revealed more distant relations, possibly cousins or members of an extended kin group. This suggests the Rani site was not just a burial place, but a home to a close-knit community that lived, hunted, and endured the Ice Age together. Even more astonishing is the link to Zlati Kuhn, the woman from that cave turned out to be a fifth or sixth degree relative to two of the Rani's individuals, comparable to sharing a great-great-great-grandparent. Though separated by distance, they belong to the same broad family tree. This connection implies mobility. Families related by blood were spread across hundreds of kilometers, suggesting early humans traveled widely, forming networks that stretched across Central Europe. Such mobility was crucial in a harsh environment where food was scarce, and survival depended on adaptability. Together, these findings paint a vivid picture of early human society. Interconnected bands, passing down traditions, maintaining bonds of kinship, and navigating a world of uncertainty. Archaeological mysteries resolved. Before DNA analysis, archaeologists faced frustrating puzzles. The LRJ tools of Rannis remained unexplained. Were they Neanderthal innovations or modern human imports? The skull from Zlati Kun, though clearly ancient, resisted precise placement in the human story. DNA sequencing resolved these mysteries in one stroke. Both sites are now firmly identified as belonging to early modern humans. More importantly, the cultural and biological evidence aligns. The same tool traditions appear at both sites, suggesting knowledge and skills were shared across related groups. Origins and Unsettling Mysteries Perhaps the most striking discovery is that these early Europeans represent a lineage with no living descendants. Their DNA diverged early from the main human family tree, branching away from the ancestors of modern Europeans, Asians, and indigenous Americans. In technical terms, they represent a basal Eurasian branch, an experiment in human expansion that ultimately ended. This challenges the old view of migration out of Africa as a single, continuous flow. Instead, the genetic record suggests waves of migration, some of which vanished, while others laid the foundation for populations alive today. The genomes also carry traces of Neanderthal DNA. Like all non-Africans, the Ranis and Zlati Kun individuals had around 3% Neanderthal ancestry, reflecting interbreeding that likely occurred shortly after humans left Africa, probably in the Middle East. Interestingly, there is no evidence of additional interbreeding once they arrived in Europe, meaning they carried with them an older imprint of contact. But why did this lineage disappear? Climate shifts almost certainly played a role. Around 45,000 years ago, Europe experienced sudden, dramatic cold snaps that transformed landscapes in a matter of decades. Forests gave way to tundra, game herds moved, and survival grew precarious. Small, fragile populations like those at Rannis may not have endured these pressures. Later waves of humans likely replaced them. The Wider Scientific Impact When news broke that researchers had sequenced the oldest modern human genomes, 
the scientific community reacted with excitement and caution. The findings demanded that scholars revisit long-held assumptions. Archaeologists gained a new anchor point for the timeline of human arrival in Europe. Anthropology was reshaped as the data revealed intricate relationships between Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. Even medicine took interest. Some ancient genetic markers appear linked to modern traits, such as immunity or environmental adaptations. This is one of the most important lessons of ancient DNA. Our biology today still carries echoes of encounters tens of thousands of years old. Pushing the limits of science. Sequencing DNA. This ancient was once thought impossible. The risk of contamination is immense and degradation usually erases most genetic code. Yet advances in technology have pushed the limits, allowing scientists to recover genomes older and more fragile than ever before. Each success adds a new chapter to the human story. The results are changing how we imagine our past. Instead of a single linear march across continents, we now see a branching, braided stream of migrations, some thriving, others vanishing. Ancient DNA reveals webs of ancestry stretching across both time and space, proving that human history is dynamic, complex, and deeply interconnected. What it means for us today. Beyond the science, these discoveries carry a profound cultural weight. They remind us that identity and ancestry are far more fluid than we imagine. Every newly sequenced genome shows that human history is a tapestry of blending, of interconnection, and of survival against impossible odds. The Rani's and Zlati Kun genomes are more than data points. They are voices from the deep past, whispering of families bound by love, of communities facing bitter winters, of migrations that spanned continents. They are reminders that we are part of a story far older and richer than we once believed. Conclusion the sequencing of the oldest known modern human genomes, from Ranis and Zlati Kun, marks the dawn of a new era in research. These discoveries reveal a lost lineage of pioneers, early explorers who spread into Europe only to vanish from the genetic record. Their DNA tells us of family bonds, cultural traditions, and the fragility of survival in a world on the edge of ice. Each breakthrough brings us closer to understanding the human journey, not as a simple path, but as a branching, interwoven saga. And as scientists continue to unlock the secrets of ancient DNA, we are reminded that the answers to who we are and where we come from are written not only in the ground beneath our feet, but in the code within our cells. So what do you think? Does this discovery change how you imagine our origins? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. Thanks for watching.